the world looks at Christians as some of the most hateful, disrespectful, and non-compassionate people out there. Let's take a look at this clip. It's a little long of this pastor that had an affair on his wife and got the woman pregnant, his mistress pregnant, and a fight breaks out in the church. Many of you may have saw this, but I'm going to make my point as we go along with this message. So sit back and take a look because you're going to be disgusted. Pastor Ricky Scott from the East St. Peter's Missionary Baptist Church in Abbeville, Mississippi, is being accused of adultery with allegedly multiple women in his congregation. Unfortunately, his acts of adultery came to a head last Sunday when the alleged mistress, a woman who identifies herself as Yolanda Beavers, showed up at the church to confront the couple. And according to the reports, she even attempted to fight this man's wife twice while she was there. Take a look. This is his wife's response to the situation that her husband, who was supposed to be her provider and protector, put her in. Yes, you have a pastor. Because we have this, this saying in our hearts and in our minds that he's supposed to be the example for the church, right? We, he's supposed to be perfect for the church because his knowledge of the scripture tells us that don't fall, right? But that's not true. God said all have fallen short. All have fallen short of his glory. Nobody is perfect. We don't know what God has for us, but we know that we're going to try to do it together. As of today, it is reported that after all their protest and using the Bible to excuse their actions, both of them, none of that worked because the deacon board did their job and voted to terminate him as their pastor. So now, as they say, he can cheat in peace and they all can be one big happy family, husband, wife, mistress, and the new baby along with his four other children, allegedly. It's becoming clearer and clearer that these men that claim to be called by God to be leaders of the flock were only called by themselves for access to the church's funds and parishioners. And what's even more sad in all of this, there were children present who saw all this unfold. And now we have another generation of people being raised with men like these as examples. Do you all agree that this man should be fired or removed from the church for his actions? And as far as his wife, should she file for a divorce and move on with her life or do as the vows suggest and hang in there for better or worse? Because we all know it's going to get worse. I suggest that Mrs. Scott head to the nearest clinic to get tested. Let me know what you think in the comment section. And if you haven't already, remember to like the video and subscribe. Also turn on your notification bell and please watch when you're notified. I'd really appreciate it. And stay tuned for more. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. All I ask is to ask one question. All I ask, they won't let me ask my one question because they know I'm telling the truth. And the police can't come on private property and ask me to leave if I'm not doing nothing to nobody. The church will witness on the pastor of the church and have not done nothing to nobody. On the pastor of the church and have not done no. No, 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 because I have not done nothing. I am the pastor. I'm the pastor of the church. And if I, I, if I can't do that, I haven't done anything. I'm the pastor. Okay, come on, I'll talk to you. Come on, come on. And as you see, the guy didn't want to leave. And his wife stood up there and defended her husband. And after all of that, and shows you just how far the church has fallen, how far people has uh, fallen. What is that called? It's some type of syndrome where 
you, you take up for your abusers. Is it the Stockholm Syndrome? I can't remember what it is. Where you take up for the abuser. And so she's going through that. And here you have the world continuously looking at the church. Because remember, when we talked several weeks ago, eight pastors have been fired or resigned in Texas. Guess what it's up to now? It's up to 13. 13 pastors and counting. And the Lord is continuing to expose. But for some reason, Texas is in the limelight at the moment. And don't think he's not coming for these internet so-called uh, prophets and preachers and all of these people that's been lying on his name. He's coming for them because he's not done. But unfortunately, the world is sick of Christians. You know, you sat back. I have a co-worker. She's extremely overweight. And she told me uh, a week or two ago now that uh, uh, one of our other co-workers on another shift has said, boy, she's gotten really fat, hasn't she? To somebody else. And then it got back to her. And she asked me, she said, isn't he supposed to be a Christian? Yeah, because he's a self, this self-righteous guy that runs around. He got his, he makes sure his cross is always stuck right out. And first thing when he sees me, hey, you've been reading your scriptures? You've been reading your Bible? Now, you know you're supposed to be doing that. But then he goes around and causes turmoil wherever he goes within our job and things. And for her to say that, she's not, she don't go to church. She's an atheist more so. She don't care. But she says, but isn't he supposed to be a Christian? I had to explain to her the actions of some people. And unfortunately, Christians are just some of the more hateful people that's out here. And unfortunately, it's the world, as I say, that treats people a lot, can treat you a lot better when you're going through something, unlike many church folks. And unfortunately, we live in a day and age where the church is dying like never before. And you have people out here that are claiming to speak for the Lord and out here trying to uh, uh, be a ambassador for the Lord, but they're doing it in such a way that has brought so much shame upon the church. No compassion as you see this. I've never slept a full night in my entire life. I was five years old when my stepfather abused me for the first time. I just felt like I was alone on a planet with a monster. I was 12 when he impregnated me. I just remember thinking I have to get out of my skin. I can't be me right now. Like, this can't be it. I didn't know what to do. I was a child. I didn't know what it meant to be pregnant at all. Philip Worrell, Wilma Ramos, Niall Campbell. They are barely teenagers, just 14 years old, but all of them are now charged as adults. Baltimore police say these three plus a 12 year old are responsible for the rape and assault of a 19 year old woman who stepped off an MTA bus two weeks ago on West Franklin Street. Two of the teens were caught on MTA surveillance video and all four were arrested late last week. Detectives say they stalked their victim after she got off the bus, flashed what appeared to be a gun and forced her into an alley full of trash, broken bottles and discarded mattresses. It was here, police say, the woman was raped. The three suspects being treated as adults each have 44 charges against them. Yeah, as you see, anytime women, I mean, when women go through, women go, we all go through some things, children and women and elderly. And for, and for some reason, women that have to deal with rape and physical abuse and all of that, it's always focused on them as if they're the problem. And you never hear anything about them coming and, and, and saying, hey, wait a minute. This is the man is just as or even more uh, has has caused this problem. And, and, and so and, and the men need to be dealt with in much harsh ways. And for some reason or another, the church, you've got pastors. Well, they want you to stay with your abuser and things. I mean, why would somebody want to come to church? Church supposed to be a, a safe haven spiritually for people to come, to regroup, to get their life together, get things on track and, and, and learn of the goodness of the Lord, the peace of the Lord and all of that. But you get pastors out here that want you to stay with an abuser. Then you get pastors that do crap like this.
Now to a very disturbing story. A local pastor is in jail accused of sexually assaulting a family member several hundred times. And court documents say it happened in parking lots in two local churches. ABC 13's Giovanni Ligi is live from the Harris County Jail tonight, breaking down everything we know. Giovanni? Well, court documents showing this sexual assault started when this little girl was just seven years old. It lasted for almost a decade, and at one point, he even got her pregnant. 39-year-old Robert Carter is the man police said sexually assaulted his own family member. A document showing this happened over the span of a decade at least 600 times. Now he's in jail for continuous sexual abuse of a child. Court documents showing the victim told police the assault would happen almost nightly. And when she turned 16, the documents showing he got her pregnant. The documents showing she had the baby in a closet, and he then took it to a nearby fire station. A grand jury has found that there is enough evidence to move forward in this case, a case that involved young teens at the time who are now grown adults. 66-year-old Russell Davis pled not guilty at his arraignment this morning. The former pastor from Seabrook, New Hampshire, is accused of multiple counts of child rape and unnatural acts with a child, as well as four counts of distributing obscene matter to a child. The charges go back to the early 2000s when Davis was a licensed Methodist pastor serving in Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Maine churches, although his license was discontinued by the church three years ago for unrelated reasons. Davis was granted $5,000 bail. As part of his release, he's been ordered to wear a GPS tracking device and stay out of the towns of Raleigh, Salt Salisbury, Newburyport, representing one of the alleged victims, says his client's life was severely impacted by the events and is now still trying to put his life back together. He wants to see justice. He wants to see him punished. He'd take them to Red Sox games and, and kind of groom them into, into um, you know, where he wanted them. And as you can see, sexually abuse, it's, it's, it's the, I mean, sexual abuse is not only rampant within households in America and throughout the world, but it's rampant within the church realm. And then everybody wanted to jump on that back. I have to go back to that, uh, that movie that was made, uh, A Sound of Freedom, where everyone, all of this trafficking around the world and all of these different things. And, they, and here you go. You get a lot of these people. They always talk about, well, we can't take care of everyone around the world. We can't do this or that or that. And, and we can't be involved. But then all of a sudden, they act like they have this great interest of everybody around the world. But at the same time, there's so much dysfunction and sexual abuse within the church community, within homes where there's a, 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 a what is it, as far as a shortage on social workers and people that, that works with the children, children's services and all of that, that people that are needed to go into these homes and take kids out of homes and all of that. And then the, I would have been a foster child. Me and my, if it wasn't for my auntie, we were on our way to a foster home, unfortunately, because of the loss of my parents. Nobody else wanted us. And just imagine all of these kids, you know, especially as they mentioned, where, where they're, they, they are behind closed doors and you have no clue. And you got pastors and parishioners and people out there that have no compassion towards these types of people. They're taking part of it. And some of them, and sweep it under the rug, they'll try to protect the pastor, protect, protect the parishioner, protect whatever. So we are in big trouble. These folks, they, no wonder the world, they, 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 they don't want anything to do with Christians. Christians are, they, they hate Christians. In their eyes, they hate Christians. They call us hypocrites. They call us the biggest hypocrites out there. They call us not, we don't have no compassion. We don't appear to have any compassion. Here you go. You've seen what they've done, the way that many of them are acting towards migrants and towards people. That's the hate. I mean, there's one thing to disagree with certain things and policies of stuff and this or that. But when you want to take it to the level of hate, when you, it's what it has shown is the hearts of many of people who profess to be a Christian. It shows the hearts of the many of the people that claim that they love the Lord. It shows the hearts. As I got to say, you can go into some of these towns. Many of us, we can go into some of these places, wherever it is, there, it, it, it's rampant. You go there. You go in there. You're not going to be wanted. They find out based upon maybe your skin color. You, you can't go. They don't want you part of that church. 
Maybe they find out that you 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 were you were pregnant out of wedlock and you have no man around. Oh, they're gonna they'll shame you out of that town, especially if it's a small community or something like that. Or you find out that you've been to prison, you've had some trouble with the law and things like that. You're you're excommunicated from society and even churches act like that they don't want anything to do with you. And you wonder why society is in chaos. In chaos. It's because a lot of it is because the church has failed his mission. That's why there's a lot of chaos within society like it is because the church has just been sitting back dormant, coming in, sitting there in the pews on Sunday mornings and sitting back singing your hymns and, la, 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 and figure you can toss out a little bit of funds in the offering plate here and there, and that's it. And hop in your nice little Mercedes and wave bye-bye, and that's it. And no volunteering of doing anything, no giving back to your communities of anything, no having, trying to create ministries within the church body to make a difference for within your community and all of that, about anything. You don't care. Selfishness. And this is what has happened, unfortunately, with the church and why the Christ, why people do not want to be bothered with Christians. And it just it saddens me and it burns me up at the same time because those of us out here that want to make a difference, those of us out here that want to share the good news of the gospel, those of us out here that are trying to let our light shine, it's constantly being tripped up from those that are standing in the forefront that have higher platforms out there in the media and set there that everyone see and they look. And you see these evangelicals and these types of people that continue to do some of the most stupid, dumbest things out there to shame and make the Lord look like a fool. It drives me insane. And you know what? We just have to, you know, it, it really gets discouraging. It gets discouraging. I mean, I, it really does. Because you just wonder, you know, I was thinking last night, I said a stiff neck people. Some of these folks are just so hard headed. They, I mean, they are so hard headed. They are so lost. They are so deceived. It's, it's crazy to me that some people, how far they have fallen off the horse, how far that they have gotten off track. And they listen to some of these foolish people online that talk some of the more stupidest things that a person with common sense, anybody would say, what are you talking about, man or woman? Are you, I mean, where you get that from? But they don't see it that way. They just, their ears are itching like never before. And unfortunately, you know, folks are falling off spiritually and we are going to have to continue to fight and stand strong and fight this battle to the end as Paul says, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. We're going to have to continue to try to do that at all costs because we're up against the devil and his tactics like never before and what he is doing to destroy souls by the thousands and millions. I mean, he is on a rampage and those of us must continue to stand in this fight and fight to the end till you have no more breath in your body. Stand and let your light shine. Stand and tell the truth. Stand and be a good witness. Stand for the Lord at all costs. Don't let these people throw you off track. Don't let people d d d try to persuade you that you're not doing anything or making any kind of difference. Yes, you are. It doesn't matter whether you're in a nursing home. It doesn't matter Wherever you are, as long as you are alive and got breath for your body, the Lord can use you in some kind of way. And we're going to continue to take this devil head on. We're going to continue to punch him right up between the chops. Evangelism for God is your channel. When we talk about issues the church run away from, my name is Maurice Braxton. Until the next video, my friends, take care. God bless.